Good afternoon. Uh, I hope everybody had a Merry Christmas. Uh, I've been out here in the shop today. I've been building a, uh, a vacuum chuck for my lathe. Uh, it's really a simple build. And uh, if anybody would like to know how, how to build these, you can make them all different types of shapes. What, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to build a smaller one one that I can turn a bowl around and put in the vacuum chuck or spin it around and actually work on the inside of the bowl too. But uh, th this one here is made the exact same way. I just made it large and flat. It can almost take the full capacity of my lathe, uh, which is 16 inches, and uh, it, it just sucks the bowl right to it so you can work on the bottom or you know work on any little defects or whatever that that you may have. Uh, we're going to connect it to a shop vac via this hose right here and uh, I'll tell you the uh, one of the big things I like about using a shop vac for this a shop vac is not a vacuum pump and it will not pull the same vacuum that a vacuum pump will however it does it will pull tremendous amounts of volume it, it's designed to move air. So if you do have a small opening or a very small crack or something like that in your piece or whatever, a shop vac can generally overcome that intake of air. Whereas a vacuum pump may lose its may lose its its suction. I actually have both that I use. I have a homemade uh, uh, vacuum pump uh, that I made out of an old compressor for the car but for this application here I'm wanting a lot of volume that way if, if, if I have any type of openings between the bowl and the vacuum chuck then the shop vac can uh, can maintain good suction on the bowl to hold it in place well uh, I guess we'll go ahead and get started and uh, I'll show you how I did this okay for starters uh, I picked up a lamp rod, which is right here. It's uh, it's a foot long. I got it from Home Depot or whatever. You can get it uh, just about any hardware store. Uh, I believe it's a 3 8 diameter. But either way, it'll fit all the way through the headstock on my lathe. It will come out right there. Okay. The other purchase was a... Uh, a bearing which I got at my local hardware store uh, it's not an airtight bearing however that's one of the reasons that I'm using a shop vac a shop vac uh, pull, trying to pull air through this thing is not going to be any problem at all for a good shop vac for any shop vac really but I'm going to use that bearing and that lamp rod and these two pieces of wood right here uh, it's it's just a couple pieces of oak that I had here I've already got them flattened out uh, on one side so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut them down and I'm going to put them on the lathe, true them up and hollow out uh, the middle of it and what this will do is this I'll be able to mount uh, bowls and things like that onto it or into it whichever way I need to do uh, if I need to work on the inside or the outside well I'll get started now I'll get these things cut down and uh, get my center marked and we'll get these turned up true okay all I'm doing I'm just blowing up my chuck which I'll use and of course I'll turn it round and you know make it into a cylinder and all I'm, just, all I'm gonna do is just glue these three together into a, a thick blank
Make, tack it up good before you get the next layer on. Make sure it's good and tacky. You don't want to slip around on you too much. Do the next layer. I'll be back once I get this stuff glued up and it and it cures. All right. Well, I've got them all glued up. I decided to add another block. This makes this about three and three eighths inches thick here. And really, all I'm going to do is I'm going to make a cylinder out of it. I'm going to hollow it down from here down to about right there in that split right there. Uh, there'll be a recess in here, and I'll have my bearing recessed in here. Well, maybe right about halfway back of this one here. And uh, anyway, I'm just going to wait until this all gets gets done up. But now I have to do a little bit of machining. Now I have to do a little bit of machining on my rod here because it won't fit. It barely does not fit. So while this is setting up, I'm going to go over to the to the lathe. I'm going to I'm going to mount the rod up in my in my number one jaws, which is already on my chuck, and I'm just going to let this stick through, and I'll file off file off these threads enough until this will just barely fit good and tight. Okay, so all I've done now is I've run my, I've just run this tube into my chuck. I've just run it all the way through, left a little bit of it sticking out here so I can, uh, so then that I can get this thing, get this thing spinning. Got it turning nice and easy, but the problem is, this thing will almost go, but not quite. And all I'm going to do is kind of machine this down a little bit so it'll accept my bearing. I'm just going to turn it on and just run this across. Because you don't need the threads anyway. I'm just going to trial and error until I get it to where it fits in there really good. Uh, there we go. Okay, see, it's a good fit. It's it's not real tight, but it's tight enough to hold it really straight. So now I'll mix up some epoxy, and I'll epoxy that right into there. And I will be in good shape. Okay, now I'm just going to mix up a little epoxy. Uh, mix it up real good. I'm just going to put it right here on the threads. Try to get it all the way around real good. You don't want to put too much because what you definitely don't want is for the bearing. You definitely don't want the bearing to get uh, epoxy inside. Now, I've, I've got the bearings that have the flange. Make sure the flange goes on the outside. Now, right. so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make sure I get off all in, all excess. Because I do not want any of that epoxy getting into the bearing. So I'm just going to wipe it off nice and easy. Make sure you don't push it in there as you're doing this either. Because if you do, you're in trouble. Because that bearing will not work. Alright. So there's that. And now I've still got epoxy on in the threads and everything else. I'm just going to put a nut and washer on here. Just for a little extra security. 
There we go. Now once that epoxy hardens, you won't be able to pull that thing out. Okay, we're in good shape. Just set, let that set up, set up. And I will be back in a couple of hours to, uh, once that stuff is cured, once my glue is cured, and we'll start turning this thing, and we'll make us a vacuum chuck, and you can save you a couple hundred dollars by, uh, by building these. Okay. Well, if you hadn't realized yet, it's raining again in Georgia. Uh, maybe you can hear what I'm talking about. I hope. But I'm going to continue making this thing. And what I've done is now the glue's cured. So I took a portion of bit and cut a two inch recess here that I've got in my chuck. That was the uh, biggest portion of bit that I have. But now I'm just going to, I'm going to start facing this off and, uh, and just turning this into a cylinder. And then I'm going to come back and start hollowing it out. And then I've got a little bit of uh, machining to do and some boring to do to get my, to get everything to fit together. Okay. Well, here we go. I have my bowl gals here. Stand back. They're very good. Speed it up just a little bit. All right. Now we're just going to start cutting it. Everything's true. I cut another uh, recess on the other side and turned it around because I really didn't trust this recess here. But I did it on my drill press, and you can see how this was, you know, it's not perfectly straight and all. So I just went ahead and turned another recess on the other side. Now I'll spin this thing around, and, uh, or, and then I spun it around and mine my true recess in my jaw. So now it runs very true. And this is the end that I'll hollow. I'll straighten all this up and smooth it up good, but I'll hollow this. The idea here is to hollow that up and get a, a rounded corner here and then a rounded corner on the inside also. I want to leave this thing about three quarter inches wide. So uh, anyway, let me move you around here so maybe you can see. All right, we're just gonna start hollowing. Start out. Start hollowing this out. Now what I'm wanting to do, I'm wanting to hollow down to right there. Now I want all the way hollowed out down to there. when I get that done. Okay, now we've got most of the hollow, most of the hollowing done, not all of it. Uh, I'm just going to measure. I've measured my my bearing. It's one and one-eighth inch. 
So I have my inch and an eighth Forstner bit here, and I've got my depth mark. I want to come about halfway through this first layer back here, which will give me just a little bit of play. All right. Then we'll bore this thing out. And all we're going to do is just bore it to that mark right there, which is just a, about an inch, deeper than what it is. Be careful when you start, because you, you want to make sure that this hole is dead centered. Well, I'm going to sand this up right quick. I'm just going to do it with... Uh, about 150 sandpaper. I'm not really looking to get a, a really smooth surface. You know, just maybe a little something fairly nice. Okay. I want something that the glue can adhere to, but I don't want any roughness. So that, that's nice and smooth enough. So let me take you down here, show you what I've got. What I've got here, is I've, I've got my hole for my Forstner bit there in the bottom, and I'll, I'll slide the whole assembly, the lamp rod and everything, straight through there, and, uh, and then I'll epoxy it in. And, uh, then this thing will be ready to go. Okay, what I've got so far is I've just mixed up some epoxy, or I've got my epoxy out. But what I have here is basically this hollowed out area is like a vacuum chamber. Basically, it'll actually contain vacuum that will help keep this thing working. But my lamp rod will just go straight through here and mount inside the hole, inside my board hole. And I'm going to do that with just a positive mixture of It takes about 15 minutes for it to set, so I've got plenty of time to work. Now I'll just put a little bit around the outside edge here on the bearing. I want to get some on this flange. It's not going to be quite so critical now as far as uh, as far as getting it in the bearing because I'm working on the outside of the bearing now. Now, let's go straight in here, just like so. And I have to mash the bearing into it with my fingers. And make sure your bearing gets in there straight and flush. Because if it doesn't, if it doesn't, your lamp rod will want to flop up and down. So, I've got it in there, got it nice and flush, and it's ready to go. All I need to do now is put my cloth on here, and I'll show you that, and this thing will be ready. Now, this can free spin while the pipe stays, while the pipe stays still. That's the idea of the whole thing. Okay, I'll be back in just a minute when I get ready to put the stuff on. Okay, now I'm getting ready to attach my foam. I'm getting ready to attach my foam to it. And this foam is just a closed cell foam that you can get. Matter of fact, I think I got this at Walmart. Comes in big sheets and stuff like that. That's what I have on my other one also. But you have to shake that stuff up pretty good too. 
But the way I'm going to apply this is I'm going to spray this side and then I'm going to spray the inside of this. I've, I've got tape in here to protect my bearing because this is a, it's a spray adhesive. Uh, and once you do both sides, you wait just a few minutes and then you can stick them together. It's almost like contact cement. Uh, once you stick it down, it's down. Uh, there's no getting around it then. But I'm going to go ahead and spray them. Nice coat. I'll spray this. I'll spray the inside here all the way around. Okay. Well, I'm sorry. I'd run out of data again. Uh, but all I've done is I've sprayed adhesive. You spray adhesive uh, on the foam and on the all around the rim of this thing, on the inside and the outside, so that I could go all the way around that curve. This way I can set the bottom of a bowl in here like so, or I can set a bowl this way, and hopefully either way it'll uh, it'll it'll hold. And that's yet remains yet to be seen. But uh, all all I have now to do is to make a stopper that'll go from this tube in, into my shop vac. I've just got to make an adapter for that. This will hook right on the end of this, just like that. And it'll hook this end right here will go, this end right here will go to my shop vac. So, without any further ado, I'm going to get me a good chunk of wood and I'm going to make me an adapter. Here I go. Okay, well I've measured my uh, I've measured my shop vac with my veneer calipers. It's right at two inches. Uh, uh, the hose on my shop vac is. So now I'm, I'm just going to try to turn this down near two inches, and I'm going to taper this in just a little bit, uh, just to make sure that uh, I'll find my there it is. Just to make sure that it does fit well. All right, that's that fits in there, but it's kind of loose, so I'll taper it up a little bit from there, and I'll just I'll just trial and error until I get it uh, to fit on there good. Okay, well now I've got a good fit on my shot back hose here, and uh, I'm just gonna I'm gonna bore out a hole for my for my uh, tube. I'm just going to bore it down to about here because I'm going to part it off right there and I want the hole to go all the way through. I've marked my Forstner bit here. Uh, the hose measures a half inch diameter so I've got a half inch bit in here. Uh, I'll just have to see if it actually fits or not. But we're going to get this started. fit just fine in there. So I'm going to part this off and then uh, we'll be ready to put this thing together and, and test it. I'll be back. I'm, I'm just going to part this off right there and we'll be right back. Okay, well here we are. This is the chuck. I had to put an extension on the back because it just barely did come through. But it goes it comes out of the tube into this little plastic tube 
all the way down into my shop vac uh, hose. I don't really have I don't have anything to a bowl to really test it with, but I'm going to turn it on and just make sure that I just want to make sure that uh, it does have good suction. I mean, you don't want to do anything unsafe, you know, make sure it's got good suction. But uh, I'm going to make sure, I mean, you can see this is spinning, but back here, everything's everything's good. So I'm going to stand back and turn this thing on and just see. Okay. All right. So when I turn my shot back on, I should actually get suction here. So we'll try that. It's got good, good suction power. Well, okay. All right, that should uh, that should do it for another project. Anyway, this uh, this stuff here, if you ever need to replace it, all you have to do is just tear it off. It'll come off, and uh, and you can just put another piece on there. I just got this stuff at Walmart. It was uh, it was in the craft section. It comes in a a sheet probably two feet by one foot, something like that, and uh, uh, there's a whole bunch of sheets in the one in the one package. So uh, anyway, this is my vacuum chuck. I will be trying it out, and uh, uh, I just don't have anything to use on it right now. Well, all right, here we are. I now am the proud owner of a vacuum chuck, something uh, I've always wanted because I know they'll really help, uh, you know, with, with making things easier. Am I going to get rid of my jam chucks? No way. Uh, I've been using jam chucks for a long time, and uh, and I, I know that those are secure, but uh, uh, go out and try it. Give it a good a good uh, test and all before you use it but uh, go out and try one uh, don't do anything in your shop though that you feel is unsafe uh, there is no tailstock uh, when you bring this up there's no tailstock of course I guess you could have one there if you really wanted to but uh, I've made a couple of different types here and if uh, you know and I could make different different types also if I if I felt I needed it so, uh, but I've got this one here. This one will do large bowls with a good flat, uh, flat opening on the top. Uh, you know, a good, a good true cut on the top. And this one I can get inside a bowl, you know, or whatever. And uh, and even I can even flip it around and uh, put it back in there if I need to make some type of uh, corrections or. Uh, you know, fix some bad finish or whatever, do some sanding, whatever. But uh, there we go. That uh, that pretty much wraps up this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, I hope that kind of takes some of the mystique out of uh, having a jam chuck. So uh, I'm going to go in and try to get this thing uploaded. I hope uh, you all had a Merry Christmas, and I wish you a Happy New Year. And uh, we'll see you later.